as I just said. Uh, uh, Dean McCotter is down in Florida interrupting a vacation. It's probably family, right? Family. Yeah, I, I would say that whenever I'm asked that, you know, uh, business versus uh, pleasure, or whatever, and I say there's a third category, family. So <laughs> somewhere in between. All right. So uh, Dean McCotter, if you'd like to welcome people. Hi, everybody. I still got my morning voice. I'm a little little huskier than usual, but thank you so much for allowing me to welcome you this morning. My name is Suzanne McCotter, and I'm the Dean of the School of Education at the College of New Jersey. Uh, and I am currently in Florida and on the Gulf Coast of Florida, so where we were not affected by the most recent hurricane, but the last hurricane did come through here with a vengeance. Um, I'm so happy to, to welcome you all to the first Global Ed Fest. Uh, and I was in a conversation yesterday where people were talking about the good things of the pandemic. The good thing is that I got closer to my family because we all had to live together or the good thing is we made new friends who we took walks with every day. And I think for us at the College of New Jersey, the good thing of the pandemic was we figured out how to extend and enhance programming for our off-site programs to extend it throughout the year, to figure out sites, to figure out how to bring people together in this virtual way. And today's Global Ed Fest is an example of how we're continuing to extend that and make sure that we can build community without being in the same place. So thank you all for joining us, whatever your time zone is today. Uh, huge, huge thanks to Megan and Stuart and Elizabeth, who I know is on here somewhere, although she's not on my screen right now, for putting this together. It was a labor of love for them. They just decided they wanted a way to connect with people during the year to let them know what's going on and to let them connect with one another. So we're so grateful that they've done that, that we can all be part of it. And to all of you who are giving presentations or just spending part of your day with us, we're really appreciative. So in a few weeks, I'm switching roles at the College of New Jersey. I will no longer be the Dean of Education. I'll be the Dean of Graduate and Continuing Education. And one of the reasons I was able to say yes to that role with enthusiasm is that I will continue to be involved with offsite graduate programs um, and be able to focus even more of my energy and attention there. So I'm thrilled to be looking at that, at, to continue to work with you in a new role and to being with you this morning. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Suzanne. Okay, so now we're, I'm gonna, uh, we can go to that slide, Megan, and I'm gonna do a little, a little bit about the history of the program. We did wanna talk about uh, where we are now. So um, TCNJ, the College of New Jersey, uh, it was, is the first teacher's college in New, New Jersey. New Jersey is... Was that me echoing? Hmm. All right. <laughs> the first, I, I heard myself back in like a in like a child's voice. It was kind of a black mirror-ish. Like <laughs> I'd see myself as a child. Okay. Um, no. Uh, anyways, <laughs> we've been uh, the first teachers' college in New Jersey, founded in 1855. Only the ninth teachers' college in the country. So uh, we were definitely at the forefront of the professionalization of the teaching profession and. Uh, you know, continue to do so, uh, to be so, and to see that as our mandate. Um, global education has a long history at uh, TCNJ as well. Um, and uh, as far as offering sites, you know, offering programs for international educators, um, we started in 1981, our first summer program, 10 students came to uh, Mallorca, Spain, to Puerto Portals, for those of you who know Mallorca, that was our site back in 1981, and um, we expanded from there rather rapidly. It started with admin, and then by 1983, they added ESL, and all of a sudden, there were 100 people instead of 10. Uh, ESL was a pretty new field back in the 80s, and we were there, yes. Uh, then 2001, we started our summer program in Bangkok, and uh, we had our summer program in Johannesburg subsequently, and our summer program in Portugal, uh, which was more, is more recent. So, you know, we've had offered these kind of summer in-person courses. We've also, during the year, offered courses. I tried to make a list of all the places, and I kept remembering ones that you know, I haven't thought about in a long time. We used to have a huge program in Saudi Arabia. I mean, I remember trying to sort those files, you know, like and there were like dozens and dozens. Um, and we we were in Mumbai, we were in Cote d'Ivoire, we you know we we we've been all over recently in uh, uh, Taiwan, Vietnam, and Cairo. Those are our three 
uh, big sites. That's why I know there's lots of people from Taiwan here. And so, you know, we, we would love to get back there. I would love, I, I think that the food there is even better than Thailand, but I, I know that's a heresy. Yes, Alan, uh, yes, I knew Alan would be horrified. Anyways, I, I don't just travel for the food though. Um, we prided ourselves on being the on online program, the, the, the program for people who like to be with people because you know we offered our classes, we sent faculty to the sites, we sent faculty in the summers, and that was sort of our brand. And then um, as Suzanne pointed out, uh, there it was, it's interesting how uh, the um, pandemic uh, shook things out, out and made us be more open and think about how to do uh, excellent, uh, excellent work online. And I'm really, really proud of our online work. So, you know, basically in 2020, we had to move our summer program to be online and uh, we decided to be heavily synchronous to require a lot of synchronous meetings. And in addition to the formal synchronous meetings, a lot of the faculty gave students assignments where they would have to meet in, you know, on Zoom face-to-face uh, -face and that, that we would build connection. And some of you I know are uh, all online students, like people who started at that point. And like, I feel I know you. Those of you who are in my classes, I feel I know you. And I feel that, I know that you feel you know each other. And that's been kind of wonderful. So um, that's still our model. And as we move forward, um, we are offering, you know, th those kinds of online courses uh, continuing uh, in hybrid programming. So with all of our programs, um, there is an expectation that people will do some in-person classes in Portugal in the summer. Portugal is now our main and only summer site. That's, you know, what we're, we, we, we'd love to expand. Uh, but you know, right now we're focusing there. You can see uh, on the slide, uh, summer 2022 at Nova, that's where we're housed at Nova University, which is an incredibly beautiful place. Uh, I don't know if those pictures do it justice. And uh, you know, Portugal in general is a really lovely, lovely place to be in the summer. Um, we have a couple of new initiatives. An important one, um, our, we still have our elementary and secondary certification program that then can be, lead into the master's. But we also want to offer more for people who uh, come to us and are already certified teachers. So into that model, we've also added some advanced master's options. So some courses that can replace some of the introductory certification courses and can lead to certification in areas like um, educational administration, ESL, uh, environmental sustainability. So there's now possibilities to uh, really tailor uh, masters in elementary or secondary education to, um, to lead into something additional. So that's uh, where we'll be probably advertising that heavily. And uh, then, uh, you see the programs that we are offering in Portugal, counselor ed, ed leadership, the courses in elementary secondary education, courses in special education, and of course, courses in you know, ESL, which really is our bread and butter. As I told you in Mallorca, it was you know, 100 people coming to study ESL. Um, online course offerings, we have a few different formats. As I said, they all have a pretty strong synchronous component, but uh, some of our courses are over the full semester, meeting on seven Saturdays. And some of the courses are over a four week period meeting on three weekends, uh, th three Saturday Sundays. So um, you can see the list of the courses that are being offered. And as I mentioned, you know, all the places in the world that we have been, we are very, uh, you know, eager to return to that model to discover new schools and new places that would be interested in professional development or coursework. And so we are, uh, you know, open to, we're, we're hoping to get back to uh, with some, I, I, like I said, I'd love to get back to Taiwan, Vietnam, and Cairo, and uh, we'd love to get to new places too. So, so that's what's new at the zoo. <laughs> I know every time I see the words "what's new," I think "what's new at the zoo." All right, uh, Stuart, can I just pop in one one quick comment? Sure. Um, just uh, to let everybody know, and we'll be making an announcement um, early next week, we have opened our pre-registration for summer 2023, which is going to be a combination of in-person courses in Portugal and also online courses in um, the condensed format that Stuart was describing. 
So feel free um, for, for those of you who may be considering coursework or um, in the midst of your coursework right now, um, feel free to take lots of pictures of our screen. We'll also be sending out some additional communication about um, the actual classes and the schedule. All right, awesome. Okay. All right, here's one, one big announcement uh, with my, uh, well, Brett is here from my uh, summer Gen Sem class. And uh, we decided to, uh, that we wanted to stay in touch. And so we uh, committed to creating a, a book club for our uh, group, uh, for the, our class. Uh, we've already met once. We read the book, The Talent Code. I forget the author's name. And we're meeting again soon to read a book called Clever Lands about uh, you know, schools across the world. And then uh, my class that just finished, uh, we are, we've got, we're planning to meet in December, still haven't picked the book. Anyways, as I was you know, doing all these book clubs in order to keep in touch with people, I thought, why don't we just do a, a general book club and invite everyone who wants to come to come? So that's what we're doing. And on uh, <laughs> save the date, <laughs> I know people who actually would write that in their calendars, but anyway, Saturday, February 18th uh, at 7 a.m. Eastern time, so the same time, and we will be talking about the book, um, The Knowledge Gap. Now, you see it's The Knowledge Gap, The Hidden Cause of America's Broken Education System and How to Fix It. So uh, first of all, beware of claims like that, but uh, it's not really just about America. I mean, I, I know it sounds like it, it's not. Um, everything that uh, Natalie Wexler talks about in that book is just as relevant in international schools and schools everywhere. So um, it's a book that I love. I have um, I have actually you know been in touch with uh, uh, not Dr. Ms. Wexler uh, with Natalie Wexler to talk about the ideas in her book, and she has been like so eager to share. And so um, I invite you all. You see the registration there. I don't know, Megan. What do you think? Is there time for the video? No. All right. Okay. Um, so please come. If you go to our website, you will see that Natalie Wexler actually sent uh, a little welcome message and invitation to people who would like to join. So you can you can see her in person. Um, okay. Great. Thanks, Stuart, so much. I mean, we're we're really excited about the direction we're going in. And as Dean McCotter mentioned. Mm -hmm. These are things that we probably could never have done before the pandemic, um, creating these new um, avenues to programming um, and you know, creating events for our global network. Um, it's actually a really nice segue um, for me to talk a little bit more about our wider global network. Um, the work we do is so interdependent, not only on all of our faculty and all of our students, but we have many, many partners out there in the world who support our students um, while they're teaching in the internet national schools, as they're searching for jobs, just supporting them living and working internationally. And we were really excited when we came up with this concept to talk with everybody today. We wanted to make sure that we were including as many of our partners as possible. So I wanted to introduce um, uh, Laura Light, who is the executive director of AAIE, which I always, Laura, after all of these years, I have to slow down and go, the Association for the Advancement in International Education. I have to slow myself down. Um, but I want to welcome Laura just to say a couple of words um, a little bit about her organization and how we partner together. Thank you, Megan. I'm honored to be here with you. Um, and uh, I am Laura Light. I'm the executive director of AIE, and I'm uh, fortunate to have been in this role now for a year. Um, have uh, AIE has been around for 55 years. Um, let me just give it a little background on me. I had been in contact with Megan actually before even stepping into this role because I was actually director of global recruitment with International School Services. So both A I S S and AIE are just up the road from you guys at TCNJ. We're over there um, off Highway 1 in Princeton. Um, and uh, a I joined AIE a year ago. Um, it is about 55 years old. We are a nonprofit based in Princeton. Um, and our, we, our goal is to work with all the leaders around the world for their professional development and bringing the community together. So um, the pandemic was an interesting time for AIE, and I'll get into that in a minute. But AIE has always been known for our conference, for bringing the community together, which we will be doing in February in Washington, D.C. So hope to see some of you there at that point. But um, it's all about bringing in the, the leaders of the American International Schools together to talk, to work together. And just like TCNJ, 
AIE went through an evolution during the pandemic, and so we've done a lot more online as well. So we do weekly conversations. We bring our leaders together to discuss hot topics. It initially started with conversations around COVID. How do we manage the pandemic? How do we deal with the crisis that they're going through? And from that, we've evolved and bringing the leaders together every week. We do professional development for the leaders. We do mastermind courses. So we're really working on building the community within the international school world of administrative superintendents, heads of schools, and principals. So we're honored to be associated with um, TCNJ and the program you have because a lot of the work that you do, we're we're synchronous. So you're bringing in the leaders. We're continuing on. So kudos to TCNJ for the work that they're doing. And we're here to support you in any way. And the AIE is just very fortunate to be invited. Thank you for having me. Laura, thank you so much for, for joining us. I know you're, it's quite early for you as well. Um, I just wanted to real quickly again, for all of those of uh, you who are camera happy, um, we've got a QR code that will take you over to um, AAIE's um, website. You can learn more about their upcoming conference, um, but please feel free to either let Laura or um, Stuart or Elizabeth or me know um, if you have any questions and we can certainly put you in touch. Please. Um, the next person I'd like to welcome um, is Sarah Menegay from um, PLS, um, which for those of you who have gone through our programs um, and who have taken VCPD 530, 540, and 590, those were through PLS. Um, even before we thought about what online education looked like, we relied heavily on PLS to um, help us with some of our core requirements for each of our academic programs. Um, I've been working with Sarah now for a few years and she and her team are integral to supporting our students and we're very, very happy to welcome Sarah to talk a little bit about PLS and our partnership. Thank you so much, Megan and Stuart. Thank you guys for having me. Um, I'm Sarah Menegay. I'm the Director of Professional Learning for PLS Classes. Um, PLS Classes, we partner with TCNJ and other colleges and universities to create engaging and meaningful um, courses and programs that empower educators. Um, we support the unique mission of each of our colleges and university partners by creating custom opportunities for each of the institutions. Um, we do anything from professional development to graduate courses, continue, continuing education. Um, PLS Classes supports educators around the world um, and in the United States. Our guiding principles when we are creating these courses um, with our partners is learn it today, use it tomorrow. Our courses help educators take what they've learned in the course, whether virtual, remote, or in person, and use those techni techniques in their own classroom the very next day, um, whether a participant is taking the course to meet a program requirement, continuing education um, that's required for state licensure, or just better understanding at the to learn within their professional development, we make sure that everyone walks away with the skills, tips, and tricks um, that will help empower educators. And um, yes, we do have the wonderful opportunity to partner with AAIE as well. So it is wonderful um, seeing you, Laura, and meeting you. Um, I'm so excited to be here. Megan Stewart, everyone at TCMJ, thank you so much for having us and continuing this wonderful partnership. Thank you, Sarah, so much. We appreciate you joining us at this, again, early hour since you are on our coast as well. Um, I Just bear with me for one quick second. I just want to get back to our screen here. Um, we do also have a couple of partners who unfortunately were not able to join us today. Um, they have shared some um, videos and resources with us. I'm keeping my eye on the clock though, and I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to share these. Stuart, do you, do you think we have a, a couple extra minutes or what are, what are your thoughts? Um, I don't, uh, I, I think it would be, we're gonna get messed up if we start starting sessions yeah. late. So yeah. um, it might be. So what I'm gonna do real quickly is just highlight uh, real briefly um, our partnership with um, ISS, International School Services. Many of those of you who are teaching internationally are quite familiar with ISS. Um, and as Laura mentioned, she um, joined AAIE from ISS and um, she, she can give us a thumbs up on um, the, the good work that ISS is doing, um, not only for um, the, the, the teacher, teacher candidates, but also for the international schools. Um, the next partner that I just want to briefly highlight, oops, let's get, oops, there we go. Um, 
Uh, the Principals Training Center is a longtime partner of offsite graduate programs. They offer programming um, previous just, just previously just for educational leaders, but also for teachers and counselors. Um, we work very closely with them. Steve Easton um, has created a beautiful video for us. Um, what I will do is I will share this presentation with everybody after the fact so you have the opportunity to learn a little bit more um, about these programs. But certainly um, we could not do the work we do without these partners who are here today and who submitted some materials for us um, for the presentation. The give you a little preview there. Sure. One quick thing I wanted to mention before we dive into uh, what is really the, the bread and butter of um, today's activities. Um, I, I, I thank you all for um, you know accepting our information about this um, event and allowing us to sort of build it as we go. This again is our first ever global ed fest. We hope it becomes a for, uh, an annual ed fest. Um, we are using our website, um, which is accessible via the QR code on the slide, as our home base for the day. All Zoom links are going to be accessible there. So use that as your guide, use that as your timetable for the day. We are trying very hard to stick to the timeline as best possible to provide um, as much time to our presenters. Um, for those presenters who are on the call today, please and thank you very much for um, recording your um, sessions. We are very, very eager to create a learning library um, and are really hoping with your permission that we can include recordings from your sessions today on our website. And as we mentioned um, to attendees, if you are not comfortable having your picture or your name um, on a video that may go into our um, OSGP library, please feel free to turn off your camera or adjust your name in the settings um, so that it's a little bit more anonymous. Um, just a quick reminder that at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m., I'm not going to say which one is going to be more fun. I'm hosting 10 a.m. Stewart's hosting 10 p.m. Um, we're going to be getting together with alumni to reconnect and tell stories and just have some fun together for a little while online. Um, just most importantly, as you're working your way through the day, we have created um, with Elizabeth's beautiful work an FAQ document. It should help to answer any common questions you might have as you're working through the day. We also have a shared document where if you're running into any technical difficulties, um, feel free to leave us a note. Um, Stuart and Elizabeth and I are going to be moderating the event today. So even if we're not able to um, talk with you in real time, since you'll be on a different Zoom call potentially than we will be, we will be able to get back to you as soon as possible. But most importantly, I just want to thank this community for coming together. I want to thank Stuart for his brilliant idea to develop this event. And again, hopefully this is just the very beginning of a next stage of exciting programming for offsite graduate programs. Stuart, any other words you'd like to say before we end this meeting and send everybody off to their first Zoom? <laughs> well, let me uh, let me encourage uh, Adam and Russ and Kate to leave uh, to leave now and then turn on their uh, Zoom so that when we come, uh, there'll be somewhere to come to at 10 o'clock. Let me encourage everyone to go. It's two really interesting sessions at 10 o'clock and uh i i think all day so um uh, just feel free to click in and click out and uh, we will our paths will cross over the course of the morning evening or day whatever the case may be so all right enjoy everybody all right bye thank you thank you all right thank you all right Ooh, it's always feels like dominoes as they start going <laughs> <laughs> tumbling away yeah. yeah well all right thank you thank you very much laura that was so good yeah laura great to see you all right i'm gonna head off to my session all right i'll see you in a little bit Stuart. all right great see job you guys and have, have a good weekend thank you right. bye okay <laughs>